Hey. So there is one gap, unfortunately, that I did not get to cover. And it's the area between uh, Brook Park Road, which is that way, and this spot of Pearl. Because down there at Brook Park and Pearl, there was a, there used to be a rallies on one corner, but on the other end, like a whole shopping area, and they're gonna tear down that shopping, most of that shopping area, and make way for, I uh, forget the name of it, but it's like a new large gas station concept area that has been getting a little popular. And I see that we're riding in the sun going this way, but this is going down Pearl. Once I get up here, I want to go down Ridge Road. So yeah, I probably could have ridden to the end of that no outlet street. It would have just taken me there and I could have taken the bike through. But it's no outlet for cars. They were doing construction a few months ago on this area. They paved most of it but aren't completely done. What I want to try to do is get to the other side and ride down Ridge Road. Hopefully going from that angle won't interfere with the sun. There's also a historical marker there that says Parma's birthplace. Some Mr. Chicken on the corner here. It has been a really long time since I came down this part of Ridge Road. As a kid, I felt like my parents used to, or my mom, used to drive us out here like at least once a week. So it was a very frequented road and area. But like I said, geez, it may have been like 15 years since the last time I came by. Here's a D DG market, so that's a Dollar General market. I didn't even know that concept existed. I assume that it's a mixture of like a Dollar General and a grocery store. I saw the two of these on the other side of the street already, and now I see one here. Now they have the pumpkin decorations with the sheet, and this is outside of outside of Rudy's Strudel Bakery and Pierogi. Is it still a... Oh, okay, so there's, I was confused at first. There's a vinyl record store in the corner and Rudy's is down, down here. For some reason, I have a memory that my grandma on my mom's side, me and my mom's mom, really liked something at Rudy's.
I just messaged, I've been messaging my mom while I've been doing this ride, some of my pictures that I've been taking. And she, she loved all the Halloween ones of those like extravagant houses, but I know she's always been a fan of the Peanuts uh, Halloween episode. So when I sent her that picture, she said, I really love this one with a smiley face emoji. And she said, for me, this one represents what that night is all about. Friends going to seek out candy. So yeah, I knew, I knew she would get a kick out of seeing that one. They also have uh, black sheets on the Halloween pumpkins as we pass a Boost Mobile. Along the left there, looks like it's promoting a real estate place, but it's a pretty creative looking mural. Parma established 1826. I'm always a sucker for places that put up murals. So I can't help myself but take your pictures. So far, these first couple of uh, sections, I really don't, after Rudy's, see anything that necessarily stands out. And I don't remember, I mean, it seems like basic places like a realtor or, you know, salon. Here's Jameson Avenue. You have a Burger King on the corner here. There's a little Polish diner here on the right. Another salon. I like the architecture though on these type of buildings. It reminds me of when I did like the Madison Avenue walk the other day. We're at the corner of Snow Road now. I'm very surprised how unfamiliar some of these sections are looking to me. Like even the CVS that's right here, I'm like, I don't remember. I have a pretty good memory of like things and feel nostalgic, but I'm like, I swear I don't remember that. I'm gonna have to check back on like really old Google Maps photos later on and compare. I know at some point up ahead, there would, should be the old Detroit, uh, not Detroit, Parma movie theater. But I thought maybe that was torn down, but at least I should be able to recognize like where it, the spot of the old theater was. Let's see here, I guess I should go. Now I'll wait for them to peel out and you got a car turning in too. Here's Brayson's Ice Cream Parlor. So on the right there, you've got an ice cream parlor. And that sun is glaring though right in the picture.
to compare when I did that Southland ride and I went down per Pearl Road from Southland like all that seemed familiar to me the only thing that was different in that one was they had a uh, what do you call it they had like new bike lanes in the street Here's Colazzo's place for specialty cakes. Now across the street there, St. Charles. I do remember like annually as a kid, my parents would bring us there for a carnival that they would have. So that was always fun to see. The carnival was like back behind this building. Oh, it looks like there's a Guy's Pizza here. I've seen the one in downtown Cleveland before, so they got a location here. But where was the old Detroit Theater? Or not Detroit, I keep saying Detroit. The reason I keep saying it is because I know they similarly tore down the, the Detroit Theater on Detroit Avenue. But Parma, I don't know, it may have been like, I swear it was in one of like either where Guy's was or like this area here, which is Mayer, Meyer Plumbing. You also have reliable radio and TV. And then a third federal. Yeah, it must, I, again, I'll have to check back on Google Maps, although I'm halfway curious now. I may pause and try to look up the address and see what's there now so I can reference it on the video. As we're getting to Dartworth Drive, and yeah, I'll take a moment to do a little pit stop here and research that. All right, so no wonder I didn't recognize it. According to Google Maps, where that CVS that I was commenting earlier, like, man, I swear I don't remember this CVS being here. That's that whole section, particularly to the front of the street, uh, is where that Parma movie theater used to be. So that's why it was even more surprising, because like now, instead of a building being there, which would be a little tougher to recognize the difference, it's actually like the parking lot is where the front of the theater would have been. And presumably that's why it's such a huge lot where you could have the CVS all the way back there. If you imagine the property having the movie theater stretch all the way far back, gives you that big lot of land. On the left, you have Bethany Lutheran Church and School and on the right here, what is this? A taste of Italy. Wait a minute, today is October 22nd. Oh, adults $20. Dinner catered by Stancato's. Authentic Italian dinner, silent auction and more. So that is at five o'clock to seven o'clock. What time is it now? 5.01. Oh, I'm just in time, right? <laughs> Well, if I would. Looks like the parking lot's pretty, pretty well crowded. You got a couple more cars probably turning in to head to that place. Although actually neither of them <laughs> turned into there. I'll have to see, I may, well, <laughs> you know, it may, it may not make sense if on the me narrating this, but I'll still say it out loud. I'm thinking of breaking up this video into two parts. 
depending on how long it goes. Maybe the first part will be the start of the ride up to that corner of Pearl and Ridge. And that would cover all three Halloween houses in Old Brooklyn. rest of the video could cover whatever ride I'm doing now. Why well, I must be riding through a bunch of fruit flies. I'm looking at my arms. My arms are covered in like 20 dead fruit flies. One of those little flies that look like fruit flies. That previous intersection is one of those things where, yeah, technically I have the right of way, but at that stop, the sun is glaring in my eyes and the car is approaching. So I always wonder to myself when I stop, because my eyes are looking into the sun, I'm kind of like giving a squinted look. And the, I noticed the driver sort of backed up and allowed me to go. But I wonder if they, I always wonder, like, do they think I'm giving them a dirty look or something? because they're a little bit over the sidewalk, which I, you know, I'm not, not doing it. There's certain cases where, you know, like if there's a walk sign and a car just drives over the crosswalk, that I get a little irked. But not in that case. But even though we're going down Ridge Road still, I do recall how there's a bit of a stretch until you get to Parma Town, where it is just a bunch of houses. We got several cars here on Southington Drive coming off the street. That car waved me on. This is Ridgewood United Methodist. They got like four or seven, I think seven or eight pumpkins on the church steps. I feel like we're really close to the Parma Town area. I let that car turn on to Buckingham Drive. that particular cross-section has 
blinking light. That's why I proceed through it even with the car approaching. large PNC bank on the left that we already passed up but you probably saw it on the way up it's like a two-story PNC and then coming up here is Ridgewood Drive. Oh, I wonder if there, there must be, there's an old Shell gas station sign there. They must have torn down the Shell gas station. This is like the whole Parmatown area where it used to, it did include the shops all along, but the mall was further down. But they rebranded the whole thing as the shops at Parma. I am gonna go over there, but first, since I'm on this side of the street, I want to ride to the Parma script sign. I'm sure this sign has been here a long time, but I've never been by it since it's been put up. So, you know, Cleveland has their own Cleveland script signs, and it's a popular thing for a lot of cities to do, but this is your Parma, Ohio version of it. And then one more area that I want to check out before going over to although I'm kind of confused by all the construction fencing maybe they're doing some project here and I won't be able to show it we'll see here in a second smell some food somewhere it smells good but yeah I, I think they're doing construction so unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to show quite what I wanted to and this looks a bit different than I recall you know clearly they've done changes over the year but the memory that it was going to convey was uh, I have this distinct memory in my head where my mom had my brother and I and we got Antonio's Pizza which is located in the shops at Parma and it still is there over there we got Antonio's Pizza and we got it to go and we my mom drove here probably parked somewhere in the vicinity I thought there used to be street parking but anyway we parked and there's behind that green fence that is all water it's like a huge well I say huge but it's a it's a like area of water like a pond a big pond 
and I think there used to be, instead of having that like gazebo uh, pavilion where you could sit down, there were individual picnic benches throughout the area. So I remember we picked like a picnic bench area, sat down, and it was a very windy day that particular day. And we had like paper plates and napkins that we had brought and all of a sudden like the wind just started blowing them. And then I, for some reason I have like a third person view of myself doing this even though I was the one doing it, of like me running and trying to like grab the paper plates and napkins while meanwhile my brother, you know again we were kids, is just like standing there not helping, he's just going whoa, <laughs> watching everything blow away. But yeah I have that. That's one of those distinct memories. And my brother also has that same memory. So that's like a commonality where we all, you know, we'll oftentimes joke and reminisce like, oh, remember that time the paper plates and I was chasing them and you were just standing there saying, whoa. Yep, unfortunately I can't show the, the water view. It looks like the water's still there, so I don't know quite what the project is, but they have something planned. The green sign says one year of construction, a lifetime of benefits. And there's also another sign that says Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. too bad here they don't have like a dip down. But that's okay. And this looks like it's only a one way for cars to exit. Strangely enough there's no sidewalk here. You gotta kinda make your own route. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to ride up to the Augustino's, sorry, not Augustino's, Antonio's Pizza area. Here's another oddity, like why do you have the sidewalk here but no lip to go down? Yeah, but I'm going to ride over toward that direction and then get off the bike and sort of do a walking tour of the area. This is a little unusual. They have a <laughs> they have a little bridge to cross this. So this whole facade has been redone when they converted it to the shops at Parma. It looks empty right now, like I don't see anybody inside. Are they even open? Antonio's Italian Dining. I do see one worker inside at least. We used to always come in this entrance 
and there was like a little hallway you could go down straight although it looks like maybe they renovated the interior too again we're talking like a long time ago although maybe i'm thinking of this yeah this is probably the entrance i'm thinking of fresh and hot pizza dine-in or takeout so that's probably the entrance where you could go in saturdays it says 11 a.m to 11 p.m yeah, that's, I think I would, we would go down that hallway and order because we never ate in. But there's GameStop. I think GameStop's always been here, but there's also Russo, Rosalina Company in Huntington. And then over there is a Chick-fil-A. I know the Chick-fil-A was, had its grand opening, I want to say a year or two ago. I actually thought about it at the time when I saw it was doing the grand opening. Like, oh, maybe I should come out here and do a video of Parma and that would be like part of the talking points that I could have is that like oh look a new Chick-fil-A and it's if, you, if anyone knows anything about Chick-fil-A it's always so busy they have you know two lines that are always crowded and eventually the cars will merge into one line and you have like three or four workers outside that are taking the orders so they can make sure they're hearing you properly I don't know if that's City Hall or what exactly it is, but across the street there, there used to be like flowers in the shape of the letters P-A-R-M-A -A for Parma. It's like the bushes basically spelled out the word Parma. Well, that's no longer like that. I know I have looked at some point on Google Maps. And they uh, got rid of that. But now let's continue down this whole stretch. I know because we're going to be like right on top of the stores, you're not exactly going to see everything. But hopefully you can see enough of the signage. Bella Nails. Quest Diagnostics cost cutters and then the big marks store so this is a marks that we're going to be walking underneath here and like i said earlier these these areas you know the facades may have been updated but this was always a strip of stores the mall was further on down See how much their pumpkins are. Carving pumpkins, four ninety eight. Assorted gourds, two ninety nine. See if we can squeeze through here. Have a Chuck E. Cheese. I'll try to point out when I get to the spot where the the mall used to be. Batteries and bulbs. My Eye Drive. Sally Beauty Supply. And then a pet land. Come play with me. Oh, I see a bunch of like little puppies and animals inside the window. Best walk, Chinese food, sports clips, GNC, H&R Block, Jimmy John's. 
music and arts. Been a quite a while since I've had a Jimmy John since they got rid of the two on Euclid Avenue in downtown. But I used to get, I think it was called, now I'm forgetting the name, I feel like it was called the Big John. Is that it? Joint, there's the Joint Chiropractor, Well Now Urgent Care, Fitworks. No, the Big John doesn't sound right. Whatever I got, it was, I think it had turkey, cheese, and something else. Oh, that sun just blinded me. Okay, so this area here might be part of the former mall. Look at this place, I love mac and cheese and more. That sounds pretty uh, tempting. Not crowded inside, but like several people just walked in. There's pulp. Juice and smoothie bar, Fast Eddie's. I feel. I think these places probably were, were here. I don't think they're new. I mean the buildings. This is the area that is. More so the replacement of the old shopping mall. Alta Beauty. Shoe department. Ace Hardware, Old Navy. Now the, the angle of the Old Navy and that entranceway like the shape of the building still looks like how the old Parmaton Mall would have been like near the entrance. So I wonder if they, even though they tore down the mall, I wonder if they still kept like part of the structure up. There's Rue 21 and Torrid and Nail Spa. Yeah, I wonder if that whole area there by Five Below is still like part of the original structure and they just repurposed the exterior space here's walls of books they got like a bunch of paper bats Ace Hardware of Parma, Old Navy. So yeah, right where I'm standing now would have been part of the Parmatown Mall entrance. Now the Dick's Sporting Goods, I know that did stay. So like the Dick's and its proximity, I believe is maintained. Uh, I'm backing up a little bit to see what this memorial is. And it's interesting that there's a shopper's world there. Because I swear, again, like if you walked down this path, I have visions of it. I feel like that was the food court or something. And then this would have been like one of the entrances to the mall. Unless I'm like thinking of a different area. But I didn't even know there was a shopper's world there. But let's see what this says here. This steel beam was recovered from the rubble of the World Trade Center after the terrorist attacks of 9-11. It was presented to the Parma Fire Department by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. May it proudly stand as a testament to the bravery and sacrifice displayed by citizens 
and emergency first responders. The design of this memorial represents the World Trade Center as it was before the terrorist attacks. Wow, that is, that's fascinating. So this, they actually have this structure here. So this is the, this block of concrete is the South Tower. That block of concrete is the North Tower. This is like the bench here is building three. Over there is building four on that long bench. That other bench over there is building five. And then that one back there is building six along with the American flag. Like, so wow, I had no idea that there was a 9-11 memorial that was constructed here. All right, so I was actually way off on what I was talking about. This facade is like not the original. I don't know how well you can see this. Yeah, probably you're, all you're seeing is my reflection, but if you can't see it, that is Fast Eddie's where we saw it like way over there behind the Alta Beauty. So over there is the Fast Eddie's. And as you can see on this old Google Photos thing, right next to that was the Parma uh, like food, food court area, and then the Parma Mall that started was kind of flush with where Dick's Sporting Goods was in the front. So in actuality, I believe this whole area here used to be like Parma Mall. So the food court area would have been like over here, and then you know other parts of the mall, like when you're walking through the aisles, would have been down here and more of them all would have been all in this area so i guess all this was cleared out and you know just the shape of how the food court used to be designed like i wonder if that was intentional it being at a diagonal and kind of going back because it does give you the vibe of you know like the old mall structure maybe the shopper's world you know what this may be the shopper's world may be in the old uh like i don't know if it was dillard's or what was located there in the past let me see what's on the other side of Day Drive. <laughs> J.C. Penney. So th that might be the old J.C. Penney entrance and building. That's what I'm going to speculate. So there's five below. Never been in a five below store. So I'm not sure exactly what's sold in there other than the fact that merchandise is five dollars and under. Got a UPS store. Hand in stone massage place. And then it looks like a couple of spaces that are for lease. Dick's Sporting Goods. So this is already in the back of Dick's Sporting Goods. <laughs> Meaning you can see back there there's un undeveloped land. So the mall may have connected to Dick's like right here, possibly. What are we passing here? Some vision place, tuxedo store. Rally House, Cleveland. K Jewelers. In front of us, past the parking lot, there is a mattress firm and a Panera Bread. Further on down, there's also a Mission Barbecue and Five Guys, as well as an Aspen Dental. And this is the front entrance of Dick's Sporting Goods.
Looks like there's a Burlington up ahead. So the Burlington to me is new. I believe there was a mall entrance down here next to where Walmart used to be. Yeah, in fact, just brought up another memory. So I, I remember when the Walmart down here at the end was first constructed as an addition to the mall. And when I had a project for high school, it was like a survey, uh, survey course. And I believe I did a, like, I had to put together, like, a poster board of, uh, well, the subject matter I chose was, like, roller coasters and do you think roller coasters are dangerous? And the purpose of it was to try to gauge whether I could create a bias with my question. It was something to that effect because, like, the roller coaster, the news snippets and pictures were showing, like, dangerous incidents. So of course when you see it, you're more likely to be swayed. So I think some people I would ask the question showing the poster and some people I would ask the question not showing the poster. And you're supposed to see the difference in bias that you're observing. But previously, next to the Walmart, there would be a mall entrance right here instead of a cut through because they were connected and like there was an entrance to Walmart right here, unless they expanded the Walmart, which I don't think they did because you would be able to come out of the Walmart. You could go in the Walmart front, but you could come out here uh, and go into the mall. But like right here, there was a hallway. You would walk down, continue going into the mall, and then you'd start going on the strip of stores. So when I did that survey, I stood inside the mall, like right here. So I would capture people as they were exiting the Walmart. I never I never asked like the mall or anybody for permission to do it, but you know, I figured it was innocent enough of a project. And, you know, I think I quickly got a the number of uh, respondents that were required for the assignment with you when you think about the number of people that used to visit a mall versus the uh, number of people that used to also visit Walmart so the combination of that let's see how much the Walmart pumpkins are 448 that seems to be the standard price just one quick peek inside the Walmart when I look to the left I can already tell it's been massively changed in terms of its design since I remember it okay so we've covered like the shops at Parma what I'm gonna do is get back on the bike so let me reattach this to my chest try to zip away from that music as much as possible. I've done such a good job already throughout this whole video not playing any copyrighted music. Don't want to ruin it. Let's see here. Where are we going for the exit? I'm trying to get to like the sidewalk on Ames. I don't know if I really see a sidewalk over there. Well, maybe instead of driving through there, we'll just cut through the parking lot and see where we get to on the right side. They have some Walmart pickup locations over here, kind of completely separate from the rest of the rest of the lot.
coming up ahead in front of us. I don't know if it's officially called the Parma Transit Center, but that's what I think of it as. So a few buses lay over there. You can see the 51, 83. Behind that is a place called Legends. I don't know if it's still there because I see zero cars in the lot. But see that place right there, crazy bins across the street? That, when I was growing up, that was a Toys R Us location. So yeah, right there was a Toys R Us. And then next to it, that place changed a few times. Right now it says Old Brook High School. Go figure, I don't know what that is. But that was a Kids R Us at one point. So you had Kids R Us there, and then uh, Toys R Us right there so the front glass windows on that crazy bins place is still the exact same as it was for toys r us uh i didn't know something was located there right now crazy bin sounds like a like a deal store and there are a decent amount of cars there So this is day drive that we're going along right now. And yeah, you can see how the parking lot back here is abandoned. I want to say that so that was pennies down there, but I want to say that that there was a Dillard's back here. Now I gotta check Google Maps again. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I mean, it actually looks like on Google Maps that Dick's might have been a little bit further down, and I know the the Macy's was located there with like a big building. I don't know if there was a Dillard's. But where Shoppers World is, I do still believe that that is the same original building as the J.C. Penney's. Because just from a, a nostalgic perspective, it looks familiar. The exterior and all the entranceways. So that must be a massive Shoppers World if they're using all the same space. I wonder if they're using like the multiple floors as well. as. But yeah, this whole area is unused. I wonder if they ever have plans to develop anything back here. Across the way, there's an old time pottery over there. That's where they actually used to be a giant eagle and then giant eagle moved. It is located down that way. I guess I should take like one picture. Type of thing I can again show my show my mom like hey you you recognize this building? I didn't know that any of the department store structures like this were still standing from the Parma Town days. Yep, definitely remember this old parking lot. In fact, a lot of times when my mom would come to the mall in general with us, this would be like the place she, she would park and we would start off here. And then you'd have Byers Field over here where they would play football games. Never knew there was a U.S. post office 
across the street for the Parma branch. Not as many cars should have a need to turn in as they used to, but still some traffic coming in. Across the street, there's a Verizon store, Dickie's Barbecue Pit, Subway, Vitamin Shop, Vans, Tire Pros, an Arby's, a Red Lobster, a McDonald's. Now, see that McDonald's there? Even though that still has been modernized on the building, I have an appreciation how they still have part of it with the red going upward and the yellow McDonald's logo. That's like a mixture of, you know, still like calling back to the classic buildings a bit. I wonder why they haven't incorporated that like little red thing in more of the modern, modern stores that they've been changing the facade of. Taco Bell on the right, as well as a Charlie's Wings and Philly Steak. And then there's a Sheets gas station and convenience store across the street. I think Sheets is what I was trying to think of earlier when I said about how that uh, gas station was going to replace the plaza by Brook Park and Pearl. And we're going to cross day drive when we have a second here. We'll go ahead and press that button again. Starbucks adjacent to the Charlie's. On the left, there used to be a Michael's craft store there. I don't know what it was before Michael's, but now it says save a lot. There don't appear to be a lot of cars at the save a lot though, so I'm not certain. Oh, actually, I think the save a lot's not there anymore because I see a big four lease sign. There's also a Dollar Tree back there. Some place called Master Pizza. Whatever used to be on here on the right is available. Space, maybe it used to be a school. Oh no, it says YMCA. So this used to be YMCA, I think. Up ahead here is Target in Parma. Now, Target, that was another place because there, there didn't used to be a Target in Cleveland near West 117th Street. 
so this would often be the target that we would come out to and shop at. There's also a Kohl's and PetSmart that are further on down to the right. We used to park in one of these spaces. They used to have spaces right up against the building. It looks like they don't have that anymore. Although maybe my memory is not serving me correct. There's also a steak and shake further on down the way. And on the left here, I had read that this was like a, I think a semi-controversial thing, how they put a Dunkin' Donuts there. I believe they may have torn down some former house and replaced it with the Dunkin' Donuts, but eventually it got put up. I know that because I was doing light research on the area via Google Maps and then started looking at articles. Uh, either a few months ago or a year ago. Let me see here. I actually do want to cross over to the other side of the street. Thought I may have missed my window to do that. Yeah. We'll just wait for the next one. Eight seconds before the light changes. Probably should have paused the video, but it's okay. Alright, let me try to get a jump before any traffic comes here. Get an up close and personal shot of the Dunkin' Donuts, right? As well as the fifth third. This is Regency Drive that we're crossing. I was about to say, is the paratransit just gonna like sit there and block the the crosswalk? should be getting the walk sign now. There we go. Over there on the right was an Outback Steakhouse and then after that a Wendy's. I do have a few memories of going to that Wendy's too. I think that was when they used to have the thick cut fries. I don't think they do that anymore, right? The reason I came over to this side of the street is if memory serves me correct on the location, this area here on the left was like a farm where you could drive up to I think this is the spot. I'll see as I get further on, but I thought you could drive up to it and feed like horses or other animals and yeah this is definitely the spot i don't know if they still do that stern's homestead i don't see any animals out right now except for like i said the the geese
open Saturday in October 11 to 2. So maybe it's a limited amount of time that they're open. But here's, they even have a historical marker, the Stearns Homestead, this 48 acre farm is the last remnant of an agricultural township well into the 20th century. Farmhouse built in 1855 by Western Reserve settler Lyman Stearns is representative of the Greek revival style of architecture popular in this region prior to the Civil War. The Yankee style barn predates the house. Suburban development following World War II engulfed virtually all this area by the 1950s. The Stearns Homestead was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1981. So I'm only going to walk up to this area here. It looks like they have somewhat of like a Halloween theme, like a skeleton, or not skeleton, scarecrow there, as well as some other Halloween things. I do see like chickens and or roosters. You can see there's a country store over there. But yeah, I do remember in the past, like somewhere we would buy carrots that they had here or some other food and you'd be able to walk up to the fence and like feed, hand the uh, carrots to the horses and then they like they would eat them from your, from your hand. I don't know if they still do that, but those are always some fun memories to have. So this says Gibbs House and then the Stearns House is back, back that way. Oh, and I just realized how there's a bunch of geese poop. I probably walked through it or had the bike go through it a little bit. There's one more place that I want to show this way. I don't think I'm going to stop the video right there. I think I'm still going to come back and show one other thing that's tied to it. Maybe a bit of a drive, but that's okay. I see uh, a little bit of a Halloween flavor here. You got the clown near the front of the house and then baby Yoda inflatable saying trick or treat. Sun Vista Drive that we're crossing now. So in the past I talked about how we used to love going to the Brooklyn County Library in Brooklyn, Ohio. That was along, uh, yeah, it was on Ridge Road as well. But the Parma Branch was somewhere up ahead here and that was also another fun branch to go to and like the, the way the building was shaped was unique but many a years ago the Parma branch moved uh, backwards so it's kind of like if you remember where uh, Antonio's was it's sort of down the street from there and they built a whole new building I'm sure it's nice and all that but I'm just talking about for nostalgia's sake. Uh, they still have the old building in existence. Something else is located there now. Oh, I wonder, see this? Uh, haunted Yard. Oh, it only, oh, it says October 21st to 23rd, 7.30 to 
10 o'clock, 5900 5, Rousseau. Maybe on the way back I'll try to Google map how far down that is. Is this it coming up here on the left? Yes, it is. So now it is the City of Parma Parks and Recreation Department. But this used to be, like I said, the Parma Library. And even though this used to be the front of the library, technically, every single time that my mom would drive us here, she would park and we would go in the back entrance. So she would park in one of these spots right over here. Yeah, she would park in one of these spots here, and then the entrance to the library that we would go in would be there. And then I think down in this area was like a downstairs area. You'd have the children and teen section. I feel like this way there would be uh, some magazines and various other collections of items. The front desk, if you went straight and a little bit to the right was there. And then if you took the elevators up to the second floor, back there there's another like structure that has uh, two floors. And when you get up to the second floor, there's a big wide area of like all the adult related books. So I can still visualize it as if it was yesterday. So fond, fond memories. And it was also cool because like when you parked back here, then you had the, the nature in the fall, fall setting. So, yep, good memories. So that's as far south that I'm going to go. I'm going to pull over over here and check out how far down that one address is on this street that mentioned the Halloween thing. And then after that, I do want to try to ride and show the location of the new Parma Library. And that's where I'll probably get close to ending the video, unless I stop to, uh, for a bite to eat. I'm, I was contemplating popping into Antonio's and uh, maybe, I don't know if they sell pizza by the slicer or if you have to order a whole pizza. I mean, maybe I'll just like check out what they have. If I order something, maybe I'll capture that. And then timing wise, technically I could head back and maybe see some of those Halloween houses at nighttime, but I don't know if I'll do that in this video or a different video because uh, things don't necessarily show up well on this 4K resolution camera in the evening time when it's dark out. So we will see. I hope I know I haven't, I haven't even said it yet and I've been recording so for so long but if you like this video feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and right now I'll peek at where this Russo house is located all right it's a little bit down the ways I guess we could do a quick quick ride. It looks like we're supposed to go to the end of the stop sign and then continue to the right side all the way to the end.
so is to the right. Problem is, I don't know if it's a haunted backyard that's like we're not gonna be able to see anything, or if it's a visible front yard because this is not one that I scouted out ahead of time. But one cool thing is that you still get to see all the houses in the area and how they're architected. kind of cool how this street is like surrounded by the nature this will be fun coming back downhill because <laughs> right now I'm pedaling to get over here, uphill. All right, so I'm assuming it's this place on the left. That's pretty cool how they have a, uh, like its own structure added on. So that, will open at, I think, 7 or 7.30, I forget what the sign said. Now for the fun of coasting back downhill. Won't have to exert any energy now. If you've been hearing the jangling, when I hit these little bumps, that's the lock that I have attached to my bike. Sometimes I used to carry the lock in my backpack, but then after I'd be done doing a long ride, it would just add to the soreness of my neck and back when I got home, so just opted to deal with the noise on the video. Usually you wouldn't even hear it on a street like this, but there's a lot of uh, small paved over parts, like every couple of, like every 10 feet.
of my recollection of looking at the map, the, the new, quote, new to me, library is between Ridgewood and Day. So Ridgewood was kind of like the start of the shops at Parma. Day was the other end of it, but in between, along the side of Ridge Road, there's a street that goes eastbound, and then down that street should be where that library is located. Getting ready to pass by Stearns again. There's a sign there that says free manure, so I guess if you're looking for free manure, you can get some here. <laughs> Hashtag Stearns Strong it says on that one sign as well as thanking people for their support. If you're curious, when I'm going downhill like that and I look at my watch, it clocks me at, well, that was at the peak, like now it's 12 miles, but it was 14 miles at the peak, which is still not, oh, well, it's fast enough, plenty fast enough for me, but still not what a lot of people who ride bikes avidly would consider fast. Didn't see this earlier, but there's a Panda Express located here. I was lying earlier about the Save-A-Lot. <laughs> the Save-A-Lot is still in operation. Forget what I said. Because <laughs> I see customers inside. And from this angle now that I'm closer up, I can see that it's in operation. Yeah, I swear just earlier, from across the street, it looked all dark. Yep, definitely still open. <laughs> so that four lease sign must be for some other building This is Day Drive, so the next intersection, you got three benches here by the way, the next intersection should in theory be where I turn to my right. Man, 
that Chick-fil-A line is freaking long as hell. Gotta be like 20 or 30 cars in line. I'm gonna turn here at Powers Boulevard. It's actually not too far down. I think I see the library from here. So on the right side, it's a medical arts center, but on the left, where you can see that like red, uh, M, you know, red, red and black lit up sign. That should be the library location. Yep, Cuyahoga County Public Library. Next to University Hospitals Parma Medical Center. So like I said, I've never been to this location, but right away I can see like there's really not an entrance on the street side, even though it's what I thought was the front of the building. So let's go ahead and go up this rampway. I assume the library is closed, but who knows, maybe they're actually open. Looks like the children's section would be back here. I have a bike rack. And here's the parking lot, and I guess where you would get in the building. And yeah, based on the fact that there's no cars here, I assume this is closed. Yep, so that should be where the main entrance is. Got a little cafe area where you can sit and enjoy some refreshments. Some books on the first floor. I think there's a second level over on the left. Sorry, we are closed. Saturday closed at 5.30. Friday and Saturday, they close at 5.30. So yeah, that is your Parma, Parma Library branch. There's also a Parma Heights branch that I assume is still in existence, which is, I think we passed that up on our Southland Pearl Road bike ride the one day. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get through here and see if I'm allowed to get down to the street side level. Because I can see Antonio's Pizza right there. And there's a bike, or not a bike path, but a sidewalk here. Well, there's some stairs, so I'm going to have to carefully go down those. But let's see what this monument is. This plaque is dedicated to those Korean and Vietnam veterans from the city of Parma who served and sacrificed their lives for their country. I'm 
Let's see here. Yeah, I'll, I'll carry the bike down the stairs. I was going to say, I could go a little bit further and just wheel it down. These are, I swear, the least like incline on the stairs. It's like I'm walking like two inches on each stair. All right, let's see. I want to get it back to Augustino or Antonio's area. So I can either go all the way up there or over back over here. So I have to kind of do a three-way cross where I go across here and then back over to Chick-fil-A since there's not a intersection over there. A lot of cars beeping. Try to do a fast, little fast pace jog across. Well, if I'm going to go ahead and try to pop in here and see what they have, but if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button, give us a subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time. Again, we'll see if there may be some supplemental footage. So if, if the video ends, thanks for tuning in. Otherwise, stay tuned.